hope students, conversations and coffee. Kick your feet up and get real comfy. We'll keep you busy during quarantine. Just stay away from COVID-19. Don't forget to wash your hands. If you don't, we can't be friends. Quarantine. Hey guys, today we're sitting down with some of our team just to talk about some stuff that's been going on right now in the world and to be able to get some stuff out to y'all. Um, I'm going to be talking to Cole and Colin today just about the subject of fear, but also just what we've been doing and how everything is going. And so um, thanks for tuning in. Huh? Hey guys. Good. We're chilling. So let's start off with some stuff that's fun. Um, let's do some would you rather questions. And so if anybody has a really funny one, y'all can answer too. So would you rather speak all languages or be able to speak to animals? I'd, I'd love to talk to a dog. <laughs> Bring it on. Let's talk to the animals. I would like to speak to animals as well, because like whenever Colin makes me mad, if you don't know, we're office mates. So let's talk to some mosquitoes. What does that, what does that mean? <laughs> it means we share an office okay. together. Making sure. Uh, are you saying that I'm an animal? No. I mean, you are. But... <laughs> so I don't think I'm around animals enough to be able to use that feature if I had that feature. Can I say feature? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Is that correct? Okay. Would you rather be the worst player on a team and always win or the best player on a team that always <clears throat> loses? Cole oh. likes to win. I Big well, winner. See, <laughs> I do like to win, but as long as I'm getting mines. So it's all about you, <laughs> I'll ride the Cole. Pine. All I'm, trying right. to go, I'm trying to go to the championship. So you I'll ride the bench. Give me the B team. Give me the It's like seventh team. grade all over again. <laughs> Let's see. Would you rather? Okay, this kind of has to do with Corona, our quarantine, the loss of toilet paper, mm. and stuff. So this one might hit like Serious. this. So this one might <laughs> actually be realistic of something that we'd have to do. Okay. Would you rather have to use sandpaper as toilet paper? Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Or, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> or, <laughs> worse than that, <laughs> have to use hot sauce as eye drops. Uh, <laughs> that was an unfortunate predicament. Yeah. <laughs> Corona is really bad. Hot Corona. Sauce. This, is deep, this is a deep dive here. Another level. Hot <laughs> sauce <laughs> and new symptoms. No. <laughs> okay, okay. I can make the sandpaper thing happen. It would hurt, but I can make it happen. I wouldn't be able to see. I, I'd be crying all day long. Hot like, sauce even you gonna moisturize your eye? Or just, no. No, I think it just dries you it out. You'd be in a constant state of tears. Can I add you an option, Colin? Would you rather I'd, I'd use sandpaper or your hand and never wash it? Oh. <gasps> oh. You can't wash your hand if you use it. <laughs> okay, so I either sandpaper. Sandpaper toilet paper. Or, or hand. Your hand. That is so gross. But you can't, but you can't wash it. <laughs> ever? Sandpaper. You can't wash it ever? Sandpaper. I think I would have to do sandpaper. That is so gross. I think I can make it work with You couldn't sandpaper. go anywhere. Imagine walking around with this, right? What could you do? You have to go sandpaper. You can never touch your eye no, it's with your hand it's because infection. Literally. Oh, yeah. And then more infection would be in the world. I gotta go sandpaper. Wow. I think I would do sandpaper too. I feel like we can make that work. You know, eventually... We'll just get used to it. You, yeah. <laughs> we'll build, we will build callus in our butt. Okay, okay. Too far. Too far. <laughs> that would be rough. <laughs> oh, um, so, oh, gosh. <laughs> Glad we're talking about fear. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that is really terrifying, actually. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think I can do that. So, what are some things that y'all have been doing to, like, pass time during this quarantine, during this... Uh, crazy time because it's not just here which yeah. is the thing that's crazy it's like around the entire world like the whole world is on lockdown yeah and it, that's wild to sports think are of. gone you know there's like nothing like live to watch on tv no. except yeah. you so like what are we what are we doing have you seen the memes that are hilarious that are like day three of quarantine just yeah. found out my wife's <laughs> favorite color is yellow <laughs> yellow <laughs> they've been hilarious and so what have y'all been doing 
Been spending probably more time on my phone uh, <laughs> than normal, uh, binging on Netflix and stuff, staying at home. Yeah, Ash and I are, are redoing the house, and yeah. so a lot of busy time doing that. Um, but we can't, we're trying not to go anywhere. You know, we're trying to stay right. at home. We're not trying to go to like a bunch of maybe restaurants and things like that. So we're kind of just staying home. Yeah. Uh, and trying to burn time and kill time that way. I, on the way here, I drove by Kroger and it was packed. Stupid. Like it was crazy packed. Yeah. And I was like, I thought we were under like a 10 people or less kind of thing. <laughs> right. But I'm a big, real. big Aldi guy. Cause there's never people at Aldi. <laughs> right. And today. <laughs> And today we went to Aldi and there was people everywhere, even at Aldi. And so if there's people at Aldi, you know, people are everywhere. Yeah. I saw a Dollar General that was wiped clean. It's Dollar General. Dollar General. Dollar General. <laughs> General. What has the, only the world store come in to? Maple. So. It is the only grocery store in Maple. You're right. Hard times. <laughs> That's sad. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I like, I actually caught up on Instagram. Oof. That's like only ever happened no like one other time. You have arrived. It said like it literally told me Put you are all caught up for the past Please three days. Please stop scrolling. Get you've off. seen it all. <laughs> nothing else to click on, and I was like, Exit wow. Exit the app, ma'am. Put your phone down yeah. slowly and walk away from it. That remind, it reminds me of the Wii. Remember when you used to play Wii? No. And like it would. T- <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm too old for it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it would tell you to go outside after a while. But after a while? After a while, it would tell you to go outside. It's like, I never right, got to that point on the Wii. Yeah. <laughs> I did. It was Played a lot of hours. Wii baseball. Oh, Sorry. well. Rip. Yes, that's tough. I guess right now, that, that would be helpful. That would be good. That's why you can play. So, okay. So, kind of talking <laughs> so about this corona and everything that's happening. It's if Like, honestly, it's wild. Yeah. Everything mm-hmm. that's going on. So... Um, one kind of topic that I wanted to talk about today was about fear, because I feel like there's just a lot of fear right now in the world. Um, people, honestly, people aren't knowing how to react to everything. And so because there is so much panic, people feel like the right thing to do is panic. Mm -hmm. Or, um, because everybody's acting like it's no big deal, it's all cool, we can go out they're going out and then more people are getting sick. And so right. I feel like nobody really knows exactly how to react and stuff. And so, um, so like, what are some things that yeah. like you would say that like to those kinds of things, you know? No, that's good. Right. And like, what's the, what's the church supposed to do? What are believers supposed to do? Right. And like this crazy time, everyone's like looking at each other saying, everyone's doing this. What are, what are y'all doing? What are we supposed to be doing? Right. And I think one of the core things, right, is like anybody that follows Jesus is that we should just be different in some capacity. Right. And so it seems, right, no matter what you watch and what you see, um, that there is a certain way that maybe you should feel or react or things you should buy, uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) even if those things don't make sense. Um, But I think that we also uh, have to look at ourselves as believers and say, hey, what what should our be? What should our response be as as the church? What's what's different about us now? Or uh, are we maybe just blending in uh, with everybody else? Mm. I'd like to think that at some point, like somebody could see the way that we shop or we give or we walk or we talk during this time and say, hey, there's something about her or him. Um, what, what do they have? Uh, and that maybe opens doors and stuff. But I think that if I could kind of sum that up is we have to be different, you know, in, in some capacity. And right. Uh, and right now it seems that there's kind of a demand to fall in line and, and maybe feel a certain way and maybe that's kind of an opportunity for the church to be different and to stand out even a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, and that goes down to the small things on uh, who we're talking to and during weeks like this and who we're hanging out with and maybe even who we're not hanging out with uh, to some mm-hmm. where we're not going uh, maybe is some of the things that we should be who we're calling who we're hanging out who we're giving to who we're helping uh, and stuff like this so anyways yeah, yeah. I saw something mm-hmm. online that was um, talking about fear and looking into this stuff was like, are the people you hang around fearful? Mm-hmm. Because if they're fearful, then you're going to be fearful. And so, like, what kind of people are you hanging around that influence your fear? You know, like, are you having people that are just as scared as you or more scared? And so that's why you think, like, oh, my gosh, I should worry. Yeah. Or do you have people in your life that are telling you, like, no, it's okay. We should lean on the Lord for it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, what's something that you were saying that um, how how should we be reacting and how should... Um, as like a believer should right. be reacting. Um, it reminded me of the verse in John. And right now our church is going through the book of John, which is really cool. And yeah. so um, that the that, he's help, that he tells us, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. 
And the peace I give you is a gift of the world, um, is a gift the world cannot give you. So yeah. don't be troubled and don't be afraid. Right. That's John 14, 27. And so pretty much the Lord is saying, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. I gave you the gift of peace and mind. And so lean on that and know that whatever this fear is coming from is from the world and not of like not for me right. you know and so um so what are uh so what do you think like how do you think that this affects people's faith of what's happening right now it's a good question i feel like i feel like you could go either way it can strengthen it um, or it can weaken so if you're if you've lost someone right so that would hurt obviously it hurts losing someone um and if someone here has lost someone, I'm sorry. Um, but it's just I, w- I want you guys to know that we serve a God that where there is death, he brings life. So if you look at Ezekiel 37 yeah. um, in the Valley of Dry Bones, there's literal dead, dry bones, but he brings life through that. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's something that we forget, um, just who we serve. Um, it can strengthen your faith if you lean, if you lean on the Lord. Right. I think we're like a really unique like place because it kind of shows us where we've been leaning on and what we've been trusting and who we've been trusting mm-hmm. and probably a little bit too much in ourselves and all of a sudden like our things are gone our Whoa. sports are gone our grades are gone and so it's like hey like what do we what do we care about who am I what's mm-hmm. my what's my identity because now it's like we, we wake up we're not going to school we're working remotely this week uh, and so our lives are drastically different and so this this time it has like a like a chance to kind of reveal maybe some of the holes that we've been trusting in a little bit too much on ourselves, right. and say, Hey, that's gone. Who are you now? Mm-hmm. And I think that it's our responsibility to say, um, that I am made whole, uh, because of Jesus and, uh, not around the things that I'm doing or the people that I'm with or what I'm, who I'm hanging out with or what my GPA is or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Cause truth is like, they're gone. They're, they're li- right now. They're, they're literally absent. Mm-hmm. And so what do we do now? And I think that is our responsibility, I think, as the church to begin right. to answer that question is, uh, is no, is like, because I have Jesus, I have everything that I need. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the question that I think we have to begin to answer. Um, and it's kind of our responsibility, I think, to, to begin to answer that. And then other people will see that, too. So, so something that's hard that kind of goes along with what you're saying, because I absolutely think you're correct. Yeah. So, like, what are, our, what are our thoughts on the fact that, like, churches are having to close? Yeah. You know, like, we can't have life groups. We can't open our doors. Yeah. Um, I yeah, think, and so. And Cole, you can speak to this too. I think there's two things that come to my mind quickly. Is one, uh, is that we're shepherds. It's like we're we have to take care of our people. Right. And so sometimes like that's a hard decision mm-hmm. uh, because it it um, literally means like we're not physically coming together, and that is like arguably one of the most important roles of the church is to come corporately and and to worship together. Um, but also, we are obedient to the laws of the land, uh, and we want to uh, respect, you know, governing authorities and respect decisions. And so, we're kind of, um, I guess, being obedient to that. But what it does is it presents like a unique chance and opportunity to say the church isn't just like walls; mm-hmm. is that we are the church, right. and maybe like we've never had to. I can say I've probably never had to do that as much as I do now. Mm. I'm going to figure that out. Like, what does that mean? Mm. You know, like when I wake up, when Ash and I wake up on Sunday, first time ever that we haven't gone to, to church because it's, it's not happening. So what do we do now? And um, I think the answer is, is we have to figure out how to best be the church now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'll te- it's an opportunity, I think, for us to, to say is, is church isn't just a, a, a service time or a wall or a building Mm -hmm. but instead that individually we make up the church and that's a strength not a weakness um and so that's something that we can like hold tight to uh in this time is is we are the church the church isn't gone Mm -hmm. it's not disappeared right and arguably it's not closed it's yes the services aren't meeting but we're very much open right and we are the church right so it's not over or done with but instead we just have to realize our role in the church Uh, and so we kind of get to play a cool role in that so yes it brings a problem but um, twofold there would be it's an opportunity as well for us to to kind of play our role out as believers so I guess I choose to see it that way right but that's an active choice I think that we have to to make as a church so yeah and even some things that like I've been doing and that everyone can do too is that uh mm. so i've been texting some students say how are you getting the word yeah. um, when we're not meeting yeah. right we, life groups are canceled so what are you going to do um 
I've been texting my friends like, hey, like, how are you guys? Like, how are you getting the word? How are you? Like, can I pray for you? Things like that. It's just like, like Colin was saying, these unique opportunities to um, be that light and be the church, maybe something that we haven't been doing. We're free, right? We got time. Right. And we so have what literally are we, what are we doing? Time. We're home. We're, school's closed. We're working here. So what are we doing with our time? Right. We're free. Probably freer than we've ever been. Yeah. yeah. And so what are we doing with our time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like, I'm going to, so something I would love is playing video games. So it's like, am I going to spend that time playing <laughs> League of Legends? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your Wii remote told you. No yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wii remote, go outside. Oh, yeah. That was something I got cut <laughs> often. But it's just like, am I going to spend that time uh, playing uh, some Fortnite or some League of Legends? Yeah. Uh, or am I going to spend that time talking to someone saying, hey, like... <laughs> Let's, let's have a <laughs> Yeah, oh man. Yeah, share the gospel and play video games. <laughs> Climb in Elo, mm-hmm. talk about Jesus. What I think is cool though is um, a lot of churches, including our church, which has been awesome that like Pastor Tim is doing like a daily devotion, yeah, yeah. you know, and um, but like a lot of churches this week weren't saying that like, hey, our churches aren't closed, but we're online now. So yeah. church is just at home. And so I think that this is an opportunity and like the Lord has a bigger plan in this that like he is just wanting to bring church into homes more because like how you were saying church isn't just a service time or it's not just like you have to be here once a week kind of thing and you get to check it off. But now it's forcing it to be a conversation in a home that maybe it's not usually or making it more aware that we don't usually talk about these things or or like we not we usually watch those kinds of things in our home which is yeah. a good thing you know right. and so i think it's a cool that's, opportunity that's happening yeah to look at like the optimistic side of it of that now these things get to kind of be in the home and so like i hope that like with this video and like with what we're going to be doing like soon um kind of build conversation in the home where a student can go up to the mom and say like hey mom you good yeah. like let me be able to sit with you. Let's talk about this. Like, are you scared? Are you not scared? How should we feel? You know? And so, um, but I think it's cool because we get to kind of start conversation in that. There's something forced to say conversation, right? about like the, yeah. And you use the word opportunity, which is, which is good. Like obstacle versus opportunity. Like it could pose a problem or could bring something really good. Right. And there's, I think like we have the believers are like, we're so blessed to be able to say like with the enemy meant for evil, like that the yep. Lord has the power and authority to turn it for good. Yep. And so we could say, hey, like we're not meeting for church. Like that's a, that's a huge issue, right? right. But, and you're onto something because you called it opportunities. There's something that the enemy is trying to swing for for bad. Right. But that like, because he's not in charge and calling the shots anyway, that there's something like when we meet in homes, it's not a problem, but an opportunity yeah. uh, for us. And so that he has like a chance to turn something really, really good. Mm. But again, our responsibility to seize it and to take it and to say, yes, I'm not getting up to go to 945 service today at one of the campuses, but yeah. uh, I'm going to sit with mom and dad and my, my siblings or my friends, or we're going to watch it with kind of a, maybe our, our core people mm-hmm. and we're not going to miss it because there's something good here. Because it's really easy to say that Easier, the yeah. enemy totally. has like taken a world of, or taken hold of the mm-hmm. world right now you know and I think it's really easy to say like well he took away school from me he took away my friends he took away church like what am I supposed to do you know but instead to look at it as like this is a whole nother opportunity that you have like to completely do something different the enemy would love to to sideline the church right and he would and so like we have to be like aware of that and just know that like this please do not think that this is just like a medical battle Mm -hmm. or like a health battle Mm -hmm. but that there's like a spiritual battle here too and so he would he would love to say that you know churches are going to be closed but we're going to like i guess say we refuse to see that that we're in like open and so but again that's on us that's on every single one of us in the room today that's everyone that's going to listen to this video to Mm -hmm. say yes my the building is closed, but like our church is not. And so we're going to mm-hmm. continue to meet, whether it's like this remotely or in a room, we're going to meet uh, because we're not going to let um, the enemy keep it. Amen. Um, but yeah. 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 Good it. word, so, pastor. That's good. That's a good word. Stop. Oh, my gosh. Stop. Next question. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Uh, we kind of um, put like said something about this, but like, um, have y'all been scared at all during this process? 
or during this time. In other words, Colin, how much toilet paper do you have at your house? <laughs> <laughs> we, the Hopkins fam is stocked. We're good to go. Oh. I don't want to result to my so, hand or sandpaper. So. I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually ran out of a roll, oh, like, no. yesterday, Instant and I was panic. like, <laughs> where are my extras? <laughs> and then I, I was fine. But I was like, Thank it like Lord. made me stop for a second. I'm oh, like, yeah. Instant the fear. first one that's done. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, a, it's just funny. But, yeah, like, if you have been scared, like, how have y'all been um, kind of, like, distracting yourself, or what have you been doing? Yeah. I think I've been more scared for, like, other people. I'm not... Yeah. I guess I'm not really scared myself. I, I don't know if it's just because I'm not in the high-risk thing mm-hmm. or not. Um, but I just read... I, I was just reading stories about, like, what the chaos and, like, what the doomsday prepping is, like, doing, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, like, I read a story about this, this old man, like, g- going into CVS mm-hmm. trying to find toilet paper for his wife, right? And... Uh, in the story, it says, like, he's, he's like, he, his eyes are red. He's been crying. And, mm. um, he says he's been going at it all day. And this uh, dude just says, like, hey, there's no toilet paper here, but I'm going to help you find some. Um, so he walks the old guy out to his car. Apparently it takes him a while. Apparently he's, like, super old. Um, but, like, his wife's in the car with mm. him with an oxygen tank. Mm. And, like, they've been going at this all day mm. trying to find some toilet paper. And finally, um, the person... Uh, the third person in the story, uh, the young guy who helped, um, found this some toilet paper, which is awesome. Yeah. But it's just like, man, I'm scared for like what this is doing to our community, our mindsets and mm. whatnot. Cause people are just like paying so much attention to social media. It's like, mm. man, everyone's panicking. Everyone's doomsday prepping. So I got to as well. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I feel like it's tearing us apart. Um, it's like that yeah. or either they're like very unconsiderate like, or very yeah, uncaring, yeah. like where they're just like, oh, I don't right. care, I'll just go out, no yeah. big deal. Yeah. But you have no idea, like, who you're affecting or who's mm-hmm. around you. And yeah. so um, I think it's important to be, like, considerate in that. And so I would say, like, that's kind of scary. We've right? become, we become, like, selfish really fast, mm, you, know, yeah. you know, and... Um, True motives. Right, yeah, they yeah. kind of come out in, like a, like, a, like, a moment like this. And I guess my fear would just be that, like, I have, I mean, I think our flesh can, like, shift really fast to, like, mm-hmm. center ourselves in, like, what we need. Uh, so just being careful of that. Ash and I say something to house that there's like um, that there's there's never so there's never surprises in heaven, mm. uh, and so just the idea that like I'm shocked that you know X happened or that we're here or that you know this is going on or that the grocery stores are empty and that I'm surprised but that the person that's making plans isn't yeah and so even though like I have the temptation to be surprised and shocked and scared and nervous um, that he's good and he knows yeah and so just trying to like relax in that. Um, I think I fear, like I called my grandparents this morning and trying mm-hmm. to, trying to catch up with them. Cause like realizing that that's a real thing. Um, and just yep. checking up, checking in on them, making sure they're okay. And, yeah. uh, because there is like, there is a real fear, uh, and just kind of validating that. And, um, I think we need to be careful about that as a church to not, uh, underscore like when people are, are fearful cause mm-hmm. they have, you know, little kids or maybe somebody older in their family, but that those fears are valid and real and, and we need yeah. to not be saying you shouldn't be scared, but instead saying, how can I help you overcome that fear mm-hmm. instead, right? And so, yeah, that's uh, kind of like what my dangerous next places at church yeah. is whenever we maybe mock somebody's fear or make light of something that they take pretty uh, serious. And so instead just saying, how can I help you overcome that? Maybe mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. would be a help, more helpful conversation. And there's yeah. two hearts for it, right? So there's like, there's a heart that is like, okay, I'm, in this sort of panic, so I'm going to panic and yeah. do what I can to make sure me and, I guess, my family is protected. But then there's also a heart that's, um, I would say, I would hope that um, the one that's like more governed by Jesus is like, okay, how can I help other people through this? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's like, what can I, can I uh, get toilet paper from my 80-year-old neighbor down mm-hmm. the street? Mm-hmm. Right? And there's that heart. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would just say, hopefully, um, I'm praying that y'all guys have the other heart, the second heart. Yeah. Run by Jesus. I think something that we like kind of touched on a lot was that like we should be looking different than right. everybody else. I think whenever yeah. we look just like everyone else yeah. and our reactions are the same as everyone else is whenever mm-hmm. there's a problem, right? Like we shouldn't be looking we're missing an opportunity. Yeah. We're yeah, yeah, we're we shouldn't be looking the same. We should be um in a way a different kind of comfort for for those people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um, a lot of, so like to kind of end, a lot of people I feel like are acting kind of cool about this all and are trying to say like, no, I'm not scared, not a big deal, when really inside they're kind of still nervous because we don't know how big this is going to get or how long it's going to go, you know? 
And so what would you kind of say to them to kind of put like a, some comfort through that? No matter how hard we try or how much we think we're in control, we're not. Right. And so like we have to like give away, <laughs> we have to give away, we like to like hold tight to things, you know, and like I have possession of this and control and decisions. But like the truth is, is I'm very much like out of pocket. And so I can make small decisions about what my wife and I are going to do today and what we're going to buy the store and where we're going to eat tonight you know, <laughs> yeah. and things like that. Um, but I think that the, uh, I have more peace because I'm not in control anyway. And so mm. I've got to like maybe yeah. let some of that go and, right. um, and just realize like it's not up to me. The mm. thing that's up to me is every single day is how can I glorify Jesus, be closer to Jesus, tell about Jesus and know him better. And so if I'm doing those things, those are the things that like are within my control. And so yeah. this week when we feel fear, we choose to say, I can't control you know, everything about this, but I can control my response to it, how I handle it, what I share. Mm -hmm. um, I think our social media should look different than people. Mm -hmm. I think our language should look different than people. Yeah. Yeah. I think where we go should look different than people. Yeah. How we respond should be different. Yeah. And so that center, I think that is the thing that we have control over. And so we choose to control those things mm -hmm. and not maybe the outcome of the bigger picture because mm -hmm. uh -huh. we can. Yeah. So um, as much as we try to, I think we should try to let some of those things go and maybe hold those things with more of an open hand yeah. uh, and just say those aren't uh, maybe your battles to fight. And so we choose to fight the ones that we can uh, and just trust that that will help in the end, I think. Yeah. So good question, though, for sure. And we we forget who has victory. Jesus yeah. has already won. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's conquered yeah. the grave. Um, when you focus on that victory rather than the world's defeat right now or what it may feel like as defeat. Mm -hmm. When you focus on that, I feel like, like I was talking about earlier, that heart, that second heart that's run by Jesus. When you focus on that victory, um, your heart also focuses on that, right? So with that, you can go out. So if you, when you do go out, instead of panicking and buying everything for yourself, pray for someone. Like, hey, I know this is hard right now, yeah. but I'm going to pray for you instead of panic. Right. Yeah. Right. That's so. good. That's good. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for sitting with us. Yeah. Um, guys, I hope that you enjoyed our conversation today. We're going to have a few more things coming out. Um, we don't know how long this is going to go, so be looking out for us. Follow us on all our social media, and we'll talk to you later. Later. Woo!